So I had an interesting thought. Is there a way to make a casual single player Super Smash Brothers? And so that's exactly what I set out to make. So for this new project, like I said, I wanted to make a casual single player Super Smash Brothers style game. The main inspiration behind this game surprisingly wasn't Super Smash Brothers though, it was the game Forager. I really liked how over time Forager allowed you to get upgrades that would make the game more interesting and you always had something to work towards. So I wanted to introduce this into a Super Smash Brothers style game and that's the basic outline. So to start off, obviously I would need a combat system. So that's the first thing I jumped into. I wanted the combat system to be very similar to Super Smash Brothers. So there's gonna be a light attack and a heavy attack. These attacks will change based on what direction you're clicking while you use the attack, such as up, down, left, or right. So I got both the light and heavy attack in, allowing me to change the recovery time afterwards as well. Now I needed an enemy to hit. Since I wanted this game to be casual, I needed the enemies to have a pretty dumb AI. So here's what I ended up going with. There can only be a set amount of enemies in the arena at any given time. These enemies will just pick a random direction to move towards, either left or right. They will move in this direction until they come across something to interact with or come across a ledge. Whenever they come across something to interact with, there's a 50-50 chance that they'll use it, such as a jump pad. When they come across a ledge, the same thing happens. They'll have a 50-50 chance to jump. This simple AI allowed the enemies to reach all areas of the arena without me having to do any pathfinding. I also gave the enemies a small percentage to dash while in air, just to give a little more challenge. So now that I had these enemies in, I wanted to work on combat a little more. I set up the basic hitboxes for each direction, and I also allowed the attacks upward to be directional as well. So I wanted the game to be mainly based around getting good combos, because that's what feels really good when I'm playing Super Smash Brothers. So I set up a basic combo system. When you hit an enemy, a timer will start for one second. Getting another hit will reset this timer, and if you let it reach zero, that's when the combo ends. While on a higher combo, the time will actually start to slow down. This makes the combos feel a lot better to perform. It also makes them a little easier to hit. When you're at a really high combo, you can feel the impact very easily. And going along with this, to make the combat more impactful, I added animations to the health bar, and I also added a little bit of knockback to the enemies. This allows the player to juggle the enemies around, which feels really good to perform. Now up to this point, I had all placeholder art, just squares and a bunch more squares. But I actually asked my friend Wolfenrad to do some art for this. He came up with this really good concept for a main character, which you can see him drawing in the background right here. He also drew a basic arena just to have a little more visuals on the screen. Along with this, he made some very basic animations, which we will refine further as we go forward, but they're pretty good placeholders for now. He also drew this basic slime enemy, which I actually haven't added in yet, but I'll get that in soon. We did all of this over Discord, and speaking of Discord, I have a Discord server. If you have any suggestions for my games, or just want to talk to me in general, check out the link in the description to join it. I hope to see you over there, now let's get back to the video. So after you clear each wave, you'll get some rewards from the arena. The crowd will actually throw money and XP based on how well you did during the wave. The two factors that affect this amount are the combos you hit and the amount of time spent in the wave. Now given the basic gameplay loop where you're going to be fighting the arena a lot, I want to have a little bit of randomness. To do this, I split the arena into three different sections, left, center, and right. I then set up a basic layout for each of these areas and I'm able to pick a pool from other layouts that I have done. It'll combine these into one overall arena, which just allowed the arena to be a little bit random each time you played it. Now you're probably wondering, why would I be fighting in this arena? This arena is going to actually give you gold to upgrade your count. Now my biggest inspiration for this game was actually Forager and how the upgrades in that were progressional. It always allows a player to feel they're moving forward and have something to work towards as they play. They can also see their island start to expand and build out over time. And this just feels really good from a gameplay perspective. I loosely use this idea to set up a base town area to return to while not in the arena. And for the gameplay loop, you're going to go into the arena to gain gold and gain XP and then you're going to go back to the town with this gold and XP. The XP will allow you to level up which will unlock new buildings to build and the gold will be used within the buildings to gain new skills and new abilities, as well as upgrade your stats. So to get this started, I first had to be able to enter the buildings. So I implemented that, allowing me to set up a sort of skill tree within the building. This will just give me a lot of options within the buildings to add interesting things to upgrade. The system also allows for constant power progression, making yourself feel stronger over time. And more importantly, it allowed for a lot of choices for the player. They can choose to build a new building, upgrade buildings, or spend their gold within the building. With the skill tree system I had set up, it also allowed me to lock certain upgrades behind upgrading the building and the player level. And it also gave me options to scale the upgrade cost. This will be useful in the future for when I go to balance everything out. Now that I had this system set up, it allowed me to quickly set up a bunch of different buildings. So to start out, I just wanted to get the buildings for level one, which were the sword house, the gold mine, and the crystal cavern. To start out, you'll only have the sword house. But at level one, you can also build two more buildings. The gold mine's pretty simple. It allows you to get passive gold while in the arena. The crystal cavern is a very similar concept except for XP. I wanted to make sure over time the player started to unlock new things. I didn't want to overwhelm them with a bunch of choices right off the bat. So that's why 
why I went with this leveling up system. They start out with only a couple options, and over time from leveling up, it'll open up these options further. Now that I had a couple buildings, I need to work on the build mode. So I quickly got that in, where pressing B takes me into the build mode. Here I can see what buildings I don't have built yet, as well as some of the future options that I'll get. This just gave a little bit of anticipation to the player so they know what they're working towards. And once I had this in, I had the core loop for the game. You can build new buildings, upgrade within those buildings, and enter the arena. And the arena also gave rewards so you could take it back and upgrade your buildings further. With all of this in, the base skeleton of the game is already laid out, and I can begin to create some interesting combat options with new weapons and abilities. I'm going to start to work on the sword abilities first, just making sure that skill tree is done, and then I'll start looking into other options. So stay tuned to see those. If any of this interests you, be sure to subscribe and turn on the notifications to see these future updates. And like the video if you made it this far. See ya!